Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video we'll be learning how to use the metric system about the metric system prefixes and how to make simple metric conversions. And as much as the United States doesn't really use the metric system too much, we do see the metric system around in uh, gigahertz. Giga is actually a metric prefix, you know, gigabytes. We see in medicine, medicine is measured out in milligrams. And in the Olympics, maybe you notice that races come down to the millisecond. Now, what you've seen here is that we're putting on prefixes in front of the unit. The unit is hertz, and we threw on gigahertz. The unit is bytes, measuring memory in computers. We threw a giga in front of that. And likewise, the unit of measuring mass is grams, and we threw a milli in front of that. And the unit of measuring time is seconds, and we threw the prefix milli. And now you're going to notice right here that we might have a 3 liter volume for a, a bottle of soda. But I didn't say anything else. I just said three liters. I didn't put any metric prefix in front of it. So the unit of measurement for the standard volume is going to be liters. In the what's known as the metric mile. The metric mile is the kilometer or the kilo meter. Now meter measures distance, but kilo is a metric prefix. And here we go. The track outside in the back of your school is probably a 400 meter track. And that's the metric system not using a metric prefix there. You know, and in, in a nutshell, it's pretty much just a, a really cool system of measuring based on the power of tens, as we'll see here. And it's used pretty much worldwide just because it's simple, and it's so easy that actually elementary school students could probably do it. So we're going to rock this out today and have no problems. This is what's known as a metric number line. And if I take a, you know, a unit of measurement, um, oh, such as liters, okay, Liters is, a, is a, what's called a, uh, a base unit, where I can just use that unit of measurement to measure volume, okay? And I'm just going to, whenever I measure, I could measure grams, time, and seconds, you know, bytes, etc. But for this purpose, in this example, I'm going to use the measurement of liters. And what you can do is put these prefixes in front of them, okay? Meaning, I could match up deci with liters and have deci liters. I could match up centi with liters and have a, a centiliter. Very common for us in, in science and chemistry is the milliliter, where milli is the metric prefix, liter is the base unit that it's paired with. Now, less common for us is going to be like micro, and that's a little you looking thing with a leg on it, the microliter or even the nanoliter, okay? Nano is the metric prefix, liter is the unit of measurement. And so really, all these prefixes actually have dashes after them, because none of them by themselves is a word. They're all prefixes that are meant to be put in front of something, all right? So any one of these prefixes here could be put in front of a different word. Different words such as seconds, grams, bytes for computers, so if you name the thing you're measuring, if it's mass, you're doing grams, you might want to reference the K in front of the grams for kilograms. If it's computer memory and bytes is what you're, me you're measuring, well, giga is a common prefix these days. And actually, even beyond giga, if I want to go out three more places now, three more places out would be the unit for T for terabyte. And like I said, the Olympics measures time in seconds. You could use M, little m over here, for milliseconds. But it's also not common these days to have something down to the microsecond, which would be the microsecond. So this is basically, the, in a nutshell, you're going to have a, a unit of measurement, such as liters, seconds, grams, bytes, etc., all which are true words and units of measurement, and in front of any one of those units of measurement, in front of any one of these, seconds, grams, bytes, liters, I can throw one of my metric prefixes. And the metric number line is just a simple way for us to get around and do conversions using the metric system. Let's start off with a good example here. All right, The unit of measurement I'm looking at is a meter, and a meter is abbreviated M. Now over here it's a little confusing, but the unit that you're measuring always comes last, such as meter. And the prefix is something that obviously comes before the word, 
and that will be milli. So I'm looking at a millimeter here. And if I have one meter, how many millimeters is that? Well, the base unit meter is found, where the base units are found, on the center of the number line. Milli, the prefix, is found one, two, three places to the right. And all I'm going to do is take my number one, and I'm going to move the decimal point one, two, three places to the right, just like I did up there. And now I'm going to fill these little hoops up with zeros. So one meter is the same thing as saying 1,000 millimeters. That's all. It's pretty simple. You're just nothing more than moving a decimal point the same number of places that you're moving something on the number line. And if I want to get technical about this, the unit of measurement milli, uh, the prefix, actually means one one-thousandth, meaning one meter is the same as one thousand millimeters. And likewise, here I have the unit of measurement one meter, and a student might say, well, isn't this one milli? Well, milli by itself is not a word. Milli is a prefix. Milli would have to come before a unit. So over here, this is simply one meter. Meter by itself is found in the middle of the number line where the base units are found. And in this case, I'm going over to centi, which is right here. And so starting right here, one, two. Well, how did I know to start there? Well, that's the unit of measurement I'm in. I am in the meter. The meter is found right here. And where am I going to? Centis, which is right here. And so I trace the line one, two. And so I take my one again, and where the decimal point is, I go one, two. And I fill up those little hoops with zeros. Now, one meter is the same as 100 centimeters. And likewise, centi as a prefix equals one one hundredth of something. Like a cent is one one hundredth of a dollar. In this example, we're going to start off with a base unit, which is seconds. And like any of the previous ones, seconds is going to be located right here on our middle of our number line. And if I have one second, how many milliseconds does that convert to? Well, we saw before millis over here, and milli is going to be one, two, three. So if I take my one, and I go one, two, three, one second is the same thing as... 1,000 milliseconds. Once again, milli as a prefix means one one-thousandth. In this case, we're starting off with a, a prefix that doesn't really start right here. Okay, so the, the metric prefix I'm um, starting off is milli, and this is milliliters. All right, so this is supposed to be milliliters. And I want to find out how many liters, you know, 0 0.1 milliliters is. So in this case, because I have a metric prefix, I'm starting my number line off right there. And I am going to the unit of measurement liters. Now you might say liters doesn't exist anywhere on here, and that's true. Liters is going to be just a unit of measurement called a base unit, and I'm measuring volume, and there's no prefix in front of it, so whenever there's no prefix, you're directly in the middle of the number line, what's called the base unit. And I'm going to go from millis to that point. One, two, three. And I simply take my decimal point in this case, and I'm going three in the same direction. One, two, three. And all those hoops I just passed by, I fill them up with zeros. And so the final answer is zero point one two three one liters. So not only do you, can you like go this way over to milli, you can also start in millis and convert into something else called liters. So, really cool, really easy to use, no matter how you're doing this, all you're literally doing are just counting the number of places that you move. And as you become more familiar with it, you really don't even need a number line, you can just kind of do it in your head. Here's an example, guys, where I'm starting off somewhere else. It's KG, and I'm going to G. Well, G stands for grams, and because it's by itself, whenever unit's by itself, it is on the middle of the number line, and kilo is going to start right there. So I'm starting off in kilo, and I'm going one, two, three. Now I didn't do a good job of uh, that one, two, right over here, three. One, two, three places over to the right. So I take my one, and I go one, two, three. One, two, three. So one kilogram is the same thing as 1,000 grams. Okay. 
Kilo actually means 1,000 times greater than. So where milli meant 1,000th of something, kilo means 1,000 times greater than. And our last example right here, guys, we're going to go start off in 1.5 gigabytes, all right? And we're going to end up in mega. It's a capital M. And so we're going to end up right here, and I'm starting off in giga. And we're just going to go 1, 2, 3, and moving three places to the left. I'm sorry, three places to the right. So we started off at 1.5, and now I need to move it. 1, 2, 3. And so 1.5 gigabytes is 1,500 megabytes. Hey guys, that is the metric system in a nutshell. All right, hope it was helpful. Have a good day.